So, I just got finished charging my car, had the AC blasting, music blaring, when BAM, someone rear-ended me. At least it felt like it. The whole car lurched forward, I looked in my rearview mirror and no one was there, and then I got the alerts on my dashboard saying pull over safely because the car has no power. Well, I pulled over at the side of the highway and I got the message that the vehicle systems were shutting down and the car needs service. The car wasn't parked and I couldn't shift to drive at all, so I sat there, played some ice cube until police officers showed up. The officer got out of his cruiser and said, Sir, are you aware this car is primer colored? I said, Sir, yes, sir. He said, Okay, carry on, and left the scene. Then my friend Sam Crack called me with one of his greatest ideas. Rich, yo, it's your boy Sam. And I just thought of some brilliance. I had to call you and tell you. If Rich was a rapper, his rap name would be Rich Homie Rich. I think that's a good rap name. Which, of course, doesn't help me. Then I decided to bite the bullet and call AAA, but then I realized I never filled out the form they keep sending me in the mail, so I picked up the phone and called the good old boys the electrified garage. They showed up with their trailer, got the car strapped up, and here is us figuring out what went wrong with the car, as well as a very detailed analysis of the problem part. Take a look. Where's the key? Could be locked too. <laughs> oh, it's on the dashboard. Okay. And all your windows are shut. Of course. See, ah, Chris is like, hey, guy, yeah, don't worry about it. I put all your windows up and I locked it up nice and tight. I'm like, Chris, I think that's gonna hurt us later on. He's like, nah. All right, Big Daddy's coming. Oh, we're really gonna feed some power. I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. A couple things are clicking. Yes! Oh. You're the man, it's Chad. Alive. You're the man, Chad. Oh, I see. Yeah, finger check. <laughs> Nothing. 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 Are you serious? <laughs> That's, it. That's not bad so far, though. There's two so far. Nothing. Nothing. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. What? Nothing, 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 nothing. What? <laughs> Are you serious? Oh man, I'm scared of you under this thing now. Oh sh. <laughs> wow. I thought I, was, on the edge. I thought I was doing better than that. They probably rattled out after a while. I'm checking because uh, they were dropping a pack in the service center. Yeah. And usually, like what we did for procedure was we took out all the bolts in the middle, yeah, left the 21s and the side rails in that would support the battery, and then get the table, put the table underneath it, and drop it down. Right. They did that. This whole rail had no bolts in it. So it came out lopsided. So no. So they were taking the bolts out in the middle. The pack fell out of the car, swung, and pinned the guy to the ground. Oh sh. Really? Yeah. I mean, how do you not feel the tension? You know when that pack's under tension. When you're using a gun, you have no idea. So oh. if you use an impact gun, you're just binging them out. Dude, I'm always like looking like the second I unscrew it, if that moves like a millimeter, I'm like, all right, something's that's, going on. That's why I'm checking. I want to know what bolts are in and what you're not in before you even touch this. Because usually I just bang those ones out in the middle because the hardest they get at. Right. And then just go down the side with an Zip impact gun. Clip. Right. And lower it. Since we got a, a look at your high voltage cables, we're going to pull this off too. Okay. Everything on the Model 3 is in the penthouse underneath the rear seat. So mm -hmm. the contactors, the high voltage fuse, right. AG module, the charger, everything's sitting right on top of the battery. So if something, let's say the main fuse blew, you pretty much take the back seat up and you flip the modules up and it's right there. Right. So everything's really, really the easy access. Whereas yeah. this one is you have to take out the pack. No, the, the, the design of the Model 3 was way, they probably realized, wait a minute, we're they, spending days and days and days worth of service hours correct. taking so, battery packs out, so the other way. Even though like, you take the pack out in the service center, you still had to take the pack apart. Right. And we were limited in the service center because everything had to go back to Reman and, and Fremont. So if you needed anything major like a spine or a cell, like where the bricks went, yeah. um, you'd have to send the whole pack to Fremont. So that was really wasteful of time and money. It's a lot of money to ship a big HV battery across country like that. Right. 
and then um, all the time that they had to spend in it, and then shipping it back, and then you're without a car the entire time unless they give you a loaner pack, and the loaner packs are tight. Right. So in Model 3, if everybody's gonna have one, it's a mass production vehicle, you need to be turned around that day, in and out. Right. You know, it's somebody's daily driver, so they made everything accessible. They were pissed, those things, huh? All right, whatever. Yeah, rodents can do some gnarly damage to uh, cables. Yeah, apparently. I've seen them chew through harnesses. Um, they wreak havoc on wiring harnesses. They make nests in them. I shouldn't have rubbed it in peanut butter first. Yeah, I saw that probably, probably. So hot. they did it for you at the factory? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> they probably peanut butter. <laughs> a, lot of, uh, a lot of harnesses are actually, the, the, the insulation of the harnesses are made out of um, vegetable oil. Really? It's a big problem at BMW. The German, they, they like to make their wires recyclable. So they mm -hmm. made it out of a vegetable oil. You wouldn't think anything of it, but to a rodent, that's heaven. That's that's. It's like, oh, you got, I can lick this entire cable. And so they just sit there and just chew through harnesses. And BMW harnesses are like that big around. Right. So you got a rodent that made a tunnel through it. You just, I mean, that car, you have to replace the entire wiring on this. Yeah. What the hell is that? Rodent nest. No. <laughs> oh, Dolores has got rodents. No. What the hell? Okay, they got in there pretty good. Oh yeah, look at that. They chewed all your insulation right up. Damn, that's how they got into the freaking car. Yep. So now with the pack down, you can actually get up there to fix all that. That does look like something was spilled in the back seat area. It does. Like a lot wow. of it too. Yeah, the, the plug's missing, so whatever was in the back seat leaked out. That one wasn't that tight either, I just saw it move. If that one tight or not, what do you think? No. <laughs> that one wasn't that bad. No, it's chewing. Uh, now we're getting serious here. Like butter, baby. There's your problem. That wasn't even tight, dude. Shut up. Oh my god. Chad, listen. I'm listening. Listen, Chad. I'm not hearing anything important coming Chad, out. This though. is why I hired you, Chad, to fix all my all my. There you go. Where's your fuse? Uh, let's double check that bad boy again. Okay. Yeah. Nothing. No Damn. connection. Damn. She blew. She blew, baby. Why don't we just get a piece of aluminum and just put it in there so I can just get going? Dude, that thing got hot. So it melted the plastic around it. Oh, no sh Look, oh yeah, the whole thing's melted. Yeah, that got hot. Wow. And what's even crazier is, this has a turkey timer popper in there and when it does blow, and it didn't pop. It's right here. See this little red dot? Yeah. Usually when they blow, that pops out, and that didn't pop out. So that thing got hot and it was a quick blow. Look at, look at the, see this coloration on this? Yeah. It's supposed to look like this. So this is normal, that's overheating. So that, that sucker got hot. It did, look at the bar. Oh yeah, left the mark. Left the mark on the bar. I wanna open this, Chad. Let's we'll see what's in it. We could open it, right? Yeah. Um, I can tell you what's in it. It's not It's not very exciting, but it's interesting. Okay. Um, so it's ceramic outer core. Mm -hmm. Then there's sand in here. And then inside the uh, sand pack is uh, copper plates. And there are a bunch of little copper plates with little fingers on it. Yeah. And those connect these two sides. So if you really want to take it apart, you take that nut off and take these guys out. Yep. And do the same thing on this side. It's two halves. It's a clamshell. And then you'll see the sand in it. You want to take it apart? Yeah, I want to take it apart. <laughs> right. so. Because you know what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to end up putting that back in the good pile. And I'm going to blow a fuse and then put that back <laughs> in the car. And be like, oh, shit. I'm going to take that bed boy out.
Look at all this Milwaukee stuff we have. Yeah, no, right? Thank you, Milwaukee. Milwaukee was awesome to us. Milwaukee, look at that. All that more Milwaukee stuff there, too. Yeah, that got hot. Look at the plastic oh melting. Oh, my gosh, man. <laughs> they even gave it orange color to the fuse. Look at that tinge. Ceramic, and this is uh, like an alloy. The fact that they're actually putting a rough screw like that straight into ceramic is really <laughs> interesting. Uh, this inside of it. This is my first bad fuse, so I want to see what's oh. inside. Pop in your cherry, so to speak. Yeah, I'm glad I got to do it with you, Chad. Oh, thank you. I feel special. Mm. Okay. Whoa. Literally no. sand. So literally sand. Now let's check this out. Oh wow. Yeah. It's just sand. And there, see how that just fell out? I yeah. put no effort into it, and that just fell out. So that's blown, blown. So I'm trying to I'm trying to preserve it as best I can for you because it's super super fragile. Mm -hmm. Once you see what how this is designed, you're like, wow, this is pretty cool. Pretty cool. One of the plates is gonna fall out. There it is. So that's the plate. Now I'm gonna put this on a so you can see it. You see the little fingers on it? Yeah, yeah. Each one of those is a fuse. So it's a plate with little individual fuse strands. Mm -hmm. So what happens is after a period of time, after a while, like overheating it and supercharging it, stomping on, supercharging it some more, it starts to wear out and gets you know, hot, and each one of those will start, little guys will pop. That's literally what I did. I supercharged and I stopped on it. Yeah, <laughs> That's so it'll pop one, it'll pop another. So if you lose one or two strands, it's not a big deal. But once you start losing a couple more, right. the moment you get a, a surge, it can't, it can't handle the surge anymore. Do you think I lost all at once, or do you think I lost them yeah. over time? So I think you lost a few of these over time, and you lost the rest. That when you After you supercharged, you had the AC on and you stomped on it. Right. There wasn't much left of this fuse, and it just blew. Gotcha. It just gave up whatever little bit it had. That oh, fuse see? gave its life. I just oh, had the, the turkey, turkey timer. Came out. Oh, I see. See, it's a hair oh. wire. So that piece didn't blow yet. It was everything else around it that blew. And the reason why they use sand is so they can fill in all the gaps to help cool it. Mm. Oh, see? All the fingers are... They popped all the way. So this is how they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be like that. Uh, See how there's the, yeah. there was only two left holding that together. It's amazing. Each one of these little guys is a fuse. They couldn't make one big fuse because it wouldn't be reliable. So they just, they That's, a bunch this of is ones. damn cool. Okay. That's so what they did is they did a hex hexagonal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look look how bad that was. You can oh, see man. It, you can see how, how it was arcing out. It gave its all for you. I think it gave its life for me. Thank you, sweetie. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's just a hollow core. So this is just like a gigantic heat sink, and the sand is to help conduct the heat away from those to the ceramic. But the fact that it got that hot and melted that right. really, really concerns me. Now we got to change this fuse out from our normal fuse. This is what they used to use, yeah, which is just a standard fuse. Now they've gone to a pyrotechnic fuse. So instead, of, this one is only rated at 630 amps. Mm -hmm. Um, because of Ludacris, the 100Ds, all that stuff, it's a lot more amperage. You're talking 1100 amps, a couple more amps. And we have one of those fuses coming no, tonight, no. hopefully. Yes. Awesome. So, we were talking about, and we're looking at some of the screws, these screws are indicative of early packs. Yep. So I went and checked the serial number, which I should have done in the first place. It's a T12L. So it's a very, very early uh, B pack. What does that mean? Almost signature series. <laughs> so what? So what's the deal with the signature cars? I heard those things were kind of interesting. They're hand built. So when they put fuses in the sig packs, yep. So every time you do an electrical connection, you tighten it, torque it, and then you do what they call a Hayoki test, and it would measure the resistance of that joint, mm -hmm. and they would hand write the the resistance reading on that joint. So every every joint in the whole pack had handwriting on it. Right. So that was like a hand built signature series pack. This is very early because it is starting to rust. Um, they were, so, there's special galvanic uh, coating that they did on the metal lids. Mm -hmm. This one doesn't have it. It's starting to rust in certain areas and the paint's coming off. So it is 
It's old pack. Old, really old pack. I think when I get into the car, I might swap packs, get a newer pack maybe. Yeah. I know the, I know, I know. these older the B, packs are the B prone. Packs, the B packs were better than yeah. the A pack. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> the A pack was, that was, they, the lot, I think most of those are non, non-existent anymore. Um, yeah. The B packs are, were the next grade up, but they were still early packs. This is a T12L. Uh, the, the 12 indicates 2012. Oh. So. That's when the cars were built. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm saying. It's it's out of the SIG range. It's not the 1000 range, but yeah. it's after the barely, 1000. Barely out of barely the range. after that. Yeah. So this is a very, very early pack, which I'm surprised that it's lasted this long without very many brick issues for you. No, no. I haven't had really any, any problems uh, yet. So now I know that I'm probably going to swap a pack and get a new pack in here for sure. Yeah. We'll do what we can to get this back up and running, but... Yeah, she's she's an early one. This sure. is not a considered a uh, an oh. issue to, to to go back for a remand. This would be more of, you know, replace the fuse, make sure everything's good, and put it back together again. And send them off. And that's that. This fuse upgrade that we're doing is exactly what they would do. It's okay. It's a power fuse upgrade because the earlier packs, because like I said, at the higher amperage and using it all the time, those fuses would eventually blow. Gotcha. I mean, it doesn't mean there's something wrong with the car. It just over a period of time, those little fingers get weak and they, you know, you lose one and you lose another. And then more amperage is going through the same little fingers and it can't hold anymore and just pops the rest of them. Gotcha. So okay. it, it, I've heard of this happening to people. Like they're just going on this highway and usually accelerate or they're pulling out in traffic and accelerate rapidly and you're bang in the back and then all the warning lights come on and there's no drive. Gotcha. So that's, that's a typical fuse issue. housekeeping. Oh, look at that light. What kind of light is that, guys? That's stuck to our lift. Is that Milwaukee? That's, That's amazing. Milwaukee. Nice. Oh, look, more Milwaukee products. That's kind of neat. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh, oh. yep. Oh. Awesome. Look at all this Milwaukee stuff we have. Doing unsafe things here. Chad, what are you doing, Chad? I am cleaning the bus bar before we put the uh, fuse back in the had a little bit of a uh, connectivity issue. That wasn't me. Way in here. <laughs> they always say they turn your head away from the arc flash. Really? And drop. Yep. And drop it in. They actually scare the hell out of you when you do when you go for training for these things. Well, rightfully so. Oh, definitely. You don't want people like me out there just doing crazy stuff. Exactly. This is this is a Rich Rebuilds uh, project here. We don't, we we don't, don't test, test. We just throw it. We in. don't test anything. This is the contactors I got. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? You saw that video, right? Yeah, just throw these contactors, and it'll be fine. I'm not gonna test them. Oh wow! <laughs> hey, look, they're bad. Oh, what do you know? Yes, I am putting the sticker on because. Oh, look at you. That's me. Honestly, the next person to take this cover off will likely be me, or one of us, or the new owner. <laughs> And is this in a, a Tesla authorized? Uh, Actually, yes. This part. is stuff that they use. The rest of the video. So that's what you want to do. You want to coat that sucker because you don't want any water getting into your battery. <laughs> These are actually. What are you using for a tool? Oh, that's nice that's little cool. Milwaukee screw gun. Oh. Just have to create a good seal, right? Correct. You'd legitimately become Cake Boss doing this. So there's more on top of it too? Oh yes. So this gets filled up here against the corner of the battery and I'll show you a neat little trick to make this look good. This looks like, like a literal cake. Ready for this? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, what are you doing now? Take some rubbing alcohol. Yeah. Keep your finger wet and rubbing alcohol. Really? It doesn't stick to your finger. No kidding. That's how it's done. Chad teaching me an old, you know, all these new tricks. All right. That's how they get it to look so good. I thought they had like a spudging tool that they use and they throw away. And... <laughs> Surprise! Wow, that's kind of cool. Uh, that's how it's done. Son of a bitch! What? They chewed it. That's rodents that chew through that. 
They chewed through the, the, the rubber. Oh, the teeth marks. And the teeth marks in the wire. They actually chewed the wire itself. The master's trying to kill me. It would have been funny if it was live when they were chewing on it. Yeah, and watch the car explode. I don't even know why. Oh, my car blew up. <laughs> I never There's know why. There's this funny little, little body back here. Yeah. Why is this little body back here? You gotta be freaking kidding me. Well, they chewed right through half the grommet. Lesson to the wise, don't let your kids eat in the third row. So Chad and I repaired the damage from the rodent. We put a new grommet on and did some minor repairs to the wiring harness itself. The car will need its drive unit service this year, so that's when we'll end up replacing the insulation barrier that the mouse chewed through. Now while we do that, I want to take a quick minute to talk about something I brought up a few videos ago about the Robo Race series. Now a lot of people have been talking about it and as a quick summary, it's about racing autonomous cars on a racetrack. Now I have a little bit more information about the cars and what makes them tick. There's four independent electric motors with 181 horsepower and 221 torque in each one, giving each car about 724 horsepower and 884 pound-feet of torque with a 0 to 60 in under 3 seconds. They're shooting for level 5 autonomy. There's three cameras in the front, one in the rear, two LiDAR sensors up front, side, one at the rear, front and rear radar sensors, and in between that, there's between 15 and 18 ultrasonic sensors around the car. But even with all that tech, there's still a 10 to 20% difference between lap times between human drivers and the AI. I asked why, and they said it was due to safety. They leave a margin where the car is not allowed to go within a specific amount of feet to the barrier. And what they really want to do is they want to provide an environment where software engineers can develop their talent. The actual teams in RoboRace will be competing in the AI driving software department. How they take their sensor data, process that, build a 3D model of the environment, and choose your racing line and respond to the other drivers. Now, I want to see and drive one of these cars against the AI driver. I'm not a professional driver, but I'm pretty good. Do you think I can beat the AI car? Maybe we'll find out. Check out their season alpha at roborace.com in the link in the description below. Now that the harness is repaired, let's lower the car onto the battery pack. Somebody had lift control. Ooh, look at that. Uh, let me go up or down? Down. Can you see the screen from where you are? Yep. Okay. Chad, what tool are you using right now? The walk impact then. Ah, makes sense. Candy wrappers. Yeah, dude, I think they brought stuff from outside the car into the car. It kind of makes sense because where they dropped the food, the mice could get in literally two inches away. All right, Chad. Okay, AC works. That's good. That wasn't working before. That's high voltage relator right there. Nice. Get your compressor turning. Compressor, that's good. I don't see any errors. Is the car on? Car's on. All right, well, put it in D. Back seat is now clean. All right, let's see. Uh, is it, oh, ha, 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 ha. It's alive! It's alive, it's alive. Woohoo! Nice job, Chad. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Chad, what tool are you using in your hand? Milwaukee, screw oh, cool. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Chad is a beast, and if you remember my prior videos, he does this much faster than I ever did. If you want to meet the Electrified Garage crew in person, click on the Eventbrite link in the description below. The Electrified Garage Grand Opening is in two weeks. Tickets are free, and there'll be a few EVs on display, including the electric Porsche 911, and Tesla will be there as well, giving test drives in their new Raven cars. That's right, Tesla's going to be there. I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and I will see you guys soon.